This is Faith Encouraged with Father Barnabas Powell. Homilies designed to help you live a purposeful and faith-filled life in Jesus Christ. Here's Father Barnabas. Today's the day. Keep your hands off your cell phone. Today's the day. It's July the 1st. The law has gone into effect. I handled my phone in my car all day yesterday just to <laughs> thwart it. It's a good law. It's a good law. But laws are always second best to wisdom. Do you understand the difference? Do you notice when we have the small entrance, those of you who are here at that time, When we have the small entrance, I hold the gospel book up and I say, wisdom. I don't say legislation. Many people have such a poor understanding of what Christianity is, they think it's very difficult. They think Christianity is very difficult because of all the rules. They're stupid. Christianity is difficult because there are no rules. There's only wisdom, and that's much tougher. Because that requires much more integrity and character on your part. Laws are put on the books to restrain evil. Wisdom exists to make men God. And the difference makes all the difference. We think... That Christianity, and especially Orthodox Christianity, folks, let me tell you, you've heard me say this before, Orthodoxy is a pain. It's a pain. Every time you turn around, there's a new thing coming on. You got to, I mean, did you all know we just finished a, 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 almost a 30-day period of, period of fasting for the Apostles' Feast? Did you know that? No, of course you didn't. You didn't know that. Well, some of you did. We just had almost a 30-day fast for the Apostles' Feast. And we just celebrated that this past Friday. It seems like every time you turn around, there's something going on in Orthodoxy, and you've got services all the time. I mean, if we had the staff, trust me, folks, if we had the staff, we'd have church every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. You know why? Because that's a good thing. That's wisdom. That's wisdom, folks. Wisdom is much tougher than legislation. Legislation is for slaves. Wisdom is for men. And women, too. When I say men, I'm, I'm talking about male and female, okay? Everybody calm down. Don't need any social justice warriors attacking me, please. Everybody just take a chill pill. Everything's fine. I know things are really rough nowadays with everybody choosing sides and everybody all getting all worked up and everybody demanding, isn't, it, isn't this interesting? They're all demanding laws to protect their rights. How sad. Nation, perpetual kindergartners, never growing up, never having the courage, watch this, never having the humility to embrace wisdom rather than legislation. Legislation is the last desperate act of a society that cannot control itself through love. Legislation is the symptom of illness and slavery. It is not the Christian faith. The Christian faith is much more difficult than following rules. It's the reason why we have this story from the gospel. Notice that the two demoniacs couldn't be constrained. And they were a terror to everyone around them. Nobody walked that way because of these two crazy guys. There's another place where a demoniac, they tried to bind him with chains. He wouldn't be bound. They tried to, uh, they tried to keep him in the grave. And so he stayed in the graveyard all the time. 
the best humans could do to restrain evil failed miserably. Isn't that kind of like today? We're the best we humans can do. We pass laws, and it's amazing, folks. It doesn't matter what side you're on or any side you're on. If you're left, you're right, you're center, you're libertarian, you're not libertarian, you're Republican, you're Democrat, you're a social justice warrior, or you're a, a, a wild-eyed right-wing nut job on, on the border with a shotgun waiting to shoot people coming across the border. No matter what, all of these failed ideologies demand laws. That even seeped into our Christian faith after the Protestant Reformation. In fact, it's been a, a thing that's bugged the Western Christianity for centuries. And our society being shaped by Western Christianity naturally takes on the weak theology of its founders. We think if we just pass laws, we'll be fixed. We're wrong. And we've proven it over and over and over again. Even our Second Amendment folks say it. If you, pass law, if you pass laws against guns, only outlaws will have guns. Well, no fake. Do you see the weakness in depending on legislation to restrain your impulses and your desires? Do you see the weakness of that? It's not going to be strong enough, folks. It never has been. It never will be. Now, for those who have integrity, they'll try to obey the law. And that's a good thing. But their reasoning for obeying the law comes from a much deeper place than their fear of punishment. Now, if you're three years old, fear of punishment works perfectly. That's a good time to have rules and regs. I have rules and regs for my kids. And they know if they cross the rules, there are consequences. And if you're three years old or if you're a child, that's a positive thing. You need that as, a, as, a, as an instructor, a tutor, to bring you to maturity. But when you get old enough, folks, shouldn't you graduate from sandbox? Are you really okay with being a perpetual kindergartner in your spiritual life? Aren't you ready to grow up and have your passions restrained by love and wisdom instead of the fear, oh, God's going to put me in hell? I tell you what, gang, I'm tired of the father getting a bad rap. I'm tired of it. Only the evil one participates in impugning the character of the father. It is the evil one who lied to our first mother in the garden about, is God really good? Yes, he is really good. And don't you dare make me question him again if you know what's good for you, snake. It is the wisdom of love that restrains our deepest passions. And it is the inherent weakness of our love that allows us to live with our passions as our masters rather than our servants. Because our passions were made to be tamed by the grace and the love of God. This is the purpose of the orthodox way of life, my angels. Our fastings and feastings our wisdom that we give you over and over again to be orthodox on purpose and not simply by the happy accident of your birth. The, this wisdom preserved faithfully for centuries in our precious orthodox faith is given to you as complete gift so that your passions will be restrained and you will become a human and not merely an animal of the field. So I want to challenge you this morning to look at this gospel lesson and notice what happens when Jesus casts out the demons in these two men. Jesus sends them into the pigs because the demons ask, isn't it amazing? Our God is compassionate even on the demons. Let me give you this phrase. I want you to remember it. I want you to sear it into your brain. Put it right here in your frontal lobe, please. You ready? For some of you, this is going to be so important that you might want to just get a pencil and jot it down. That might be wisdom for you. You may have many enemies in this world, but God is never, never, never one of them. Period. Full stop. End of discussion. You may have many enemies in this world, starting with moi. I saw a great cartoon on the internet. That's the one good thing that the internet is for, memes and cartoons. I love this. 
This old preacher was down on his knees and he was saying, Oh God, smite my enemies, O Lord. Smite those that are my worst enemies, O Lord. With locusts, with locusts, O Lord, smite my enemies. And this bunch of locusts starts eating up the preacher. And the preacher says, Let me rephrase, Lord. You see, folks, most of the time you have more, more of your problems with yourself than you do anybody else around you. How are you going to restrain that? How are you going to finally grow up and grow beyond the need to have somebody standing over you with a whip saying, you better be a good boy. You better be a good boy. It's time to grow up and be a man and be a woman and embrace wisdom. But wisdom is much tougher, folks. Wisdom insists on a continual act of vigilance. Why do you think, folks, the people of the town where these two men were healed, asked Jesus to leave them. Why did they do that? Number one, the two pig farmers found out that their entire livelihood was now at the bottom of the ocean. And number two, they weren't ready for wisdom. They weren't ready for freedom. They didn't want it. And so what did they ask Jesus to do? Please leave. And what does Jesus do? He leaves. Brothers and sisters, in your life today, you will make countless micro and macro decisions throughout your day that will be a choice between freedom and slavery. You will make macro and micro decisions from moment by moment that will reveal whether you are willing to be governed by wisdom or you still need laws because of your immaturity. Every choice. And folks, none of this is anybody else's fault but yours. Part of being a grown-up, ladies and gentlemen, is coming to grips with the fact that I'm responsible for my life. Now, there are outside factors, that's true. But brothers and sisters, if you make yourself a slave to outside factors, then you are in fact a slave. And you weren't made to be a slave. You were made to be free just like God is free. You were made to become by grace what Christ is by nature. There is nothing in your life more important than getting busy with that truth in your own life. And that will not dawn on you. It will not break through the noise of everyday life until you stop, quiet yourself, and allow wisdom to become your guide and not depend on legislation to keep you from doing stupid things. It's time to grow up, my angels. It's time to embrace the freedom that Jesus Christ has won for each of you by His death, burial, and resurrection and ascension to the right hand of God the Father. It's time for us to become mature and grow up beyond the rules to embrace the wisdom of the faith. Stop depending on fear to make you good. It's too small. You'll stay a child. Start squaring your shoulders. Lean into a life that is admittedly hard. Grab your cross and put it on your shoulder and drag that thing up the hill. Knowing full well when you get to the top, they're going to kill you. It's only used for a cross, folks. Sorry. Fortunately, with Christianity, death is, well, it's temporary. You were made for freedom, my angels. Please stop accepting less. You were created for better. Let the wisdom of the faith tame your passions. Stop allowing your desires to be your master. He says, pointing three fingers back at himself. Amen. Father Barnabas is the priest at the Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene Greek Orthodox Church in Cumming, Georgia. Find out more at faithencouraged.org. That's faithencouraged.org.